I love this part. Sending your machine to its permanent home. Sending it home out to Ohio. It's heading your way, Tony. It's heading your way, my friend. What I'm doing right now is just adding some extra padding to some of the sensitive areas of the machine, which includes some plastic housing on this side over here, where you plug the power cord in, and then also our upper tension assembly as well. These are areas that are more vulnerable, so we add just a little bit of extra padding, plus and on top of that we add all of the regular wrap uh, as well. That way if there's a catastrophic uh, issue during shipping, uh, we're less likely to uh, to experience damage. Perfect. Notice we already uh, used uh, painter's tape to tag down uh, the threading of the machine so it's all set when it arrives for Tony. He doesn't have to thread it up, doesn't have to worry with any of that. Brand new needle, so it's, uh, it's all ready to go to work as soon as he unpacks it. And then also we've uh, padded the uh, foot controller as well with about uh, four to six layers of bubble wrap with stretch wrap and then tape on top of that. So. You protect everything. Don't leave anything to chance. All right, now we're going to use our little pad up here for the upper tension. See how I'm doing that to close off this top because we want to totally encapsulate it. Uh, is I'm just going to one corner and then I'm stretching it across and then I go around the machine to tag that down. And now at this point we have that all closed off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to secure that stretch wrap with uh, strapping tape so that it has more stability and it also anchors it down. You can see the front, we've done that as well. To Tony's machine, all of that is closed off uh, as well to totally protect um, the painted surfaces and just keep anything from getting in there, whether it's peanuts or other debris getting into the machine during shipping. And it also adds another uh, layer of protection. Uh, I ship in plastic totes. Uh, 
so there is a degree of water protection if it's raining or something like that but this even adds an additional layer on top of that leave nothing to chance when you're sending a treasure like this especially after I put so much work into it so the first thing I'm doing is just anchoring down the top giving a nice solid shell to the top you can add it just a small little strip uh, lengthwise just to kind of seal off that tape that you just put on and now we're going to go around the entire body of the machine with strap and tape to reinforce all of that stretch wrap that has already been applied. Getting pretty low on this roll. Probably have to change it out pretty quick here. I'm going to rotate the machine and strap off the front of it as well. Wrap it around, reinforce that and seal that off as well. So you can see we've gone all the way around the machine. So all of this stretch wrap now is uh, made a single unit with the strapping tape. The goal is to always make everything a single unit at every stage because it, uh, it makes it more sturdy, it makes it more strong, it makes it more resilient against potential damage. <clears throat> so where I'm going to focus now is uh, some sort of a padding base for the bottom. We've got these great uh, pedestal feet. You can kind of see it here in the shot. Maybe. <laughs> you can see the pedestal feet. Uh, but we also have these cast feet as well on the end. And those are prone to uh, uh, breaking. So we've got to give some sort of a cushion underneath that base. go with something like this uh, it's it's got a pretty high mill count as far as the um, plastic but those feet are pretty pokey so we don't want to risk them puncturing this and then compromising our protection on the bottom so we're going to use something a lot more uh, rigid styrofoam but as I've said in other premieres we're going to strap this down with strapping tape to make it a single unit and to keep it from being uh, prone to being brittle and breaking. So a little bit of a tedious process. We'll probably run out of tape doing this and we'll have to switch the roll over, which is fine. But you start from one end to the other, going around.
eventually you develop a little bit of rhythm. As soon as you develop a rhythm, you run out of tape. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Let me give this a clip. And we'll get another roll uh, in place so we can continue reinforcing the space. Would the machine arrive uh, safe if we didn't go through this point of uh, strapping down uh, around the star foam? Most likely, yes. But it just raises the threshold of protection a little bit higher and uh, reduces the likelihood of that uh, styrofoam being compromised. Because styrofoam, as soon as it gets a crack, it's like, um, it's like a dam, uh, a hole in a dam. That hole just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In this case, the crack just continues to uh, grow. And uh, as that machine is jostled around, as it's probably dropped on the floor in different uh, courier locations or thrown on the back of trucks, uh, there's a high likelihood that that styrofoam is going to get compromised. And once it gets compromised, it's just it's a, a domino effect. Just a domino effect. directions this way. make it a single unit right so we're gonna go over the top of the machine here uh, by the faceplate by the uh, balance wheel go all the way around yeah oh that's almost worth playing again <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's so awesome. How do we go to a sad song after that? But that's what's next in line. So here we go. All right, so I'm just gonna rotate this so the face plate is towards the camera. Really watch your, uh, your balance point. 
watch your balance point. You don't want this thing to tip off. So we're stable enough, enough of the back weight because of the motor and that is holding it back. So now we're going to go around the top all the way around like this and anchor the machine to this uh, heavy uh, styrofoam base that we just sealed off with the uh, strapping tape. Make sense? Of course it does. You are like the smartest, smartest folks that there are. Or as they used to say in the South, the smartest folks that there ever was. I go around about probably four times because we're going to go over the top of this now with strapping, strapping tape, uh, and that's really the the major strength. This is going to cause the uh, the tinsel pressure against the machine to the base that we just created, and this is going to anchor it. The strapping tape. probably about four to six times. Now we're going to carefully slide the machine back since we have that anchored on that side. And spin it around so the uh, balance wheel is pointing towards us now. And we're going to do the same thing. And here we're going to have to be a lot more careful because of the weight of the motor and all of the uh, mechanics on this end are quite a bit heavier. So we really have to watch that tilt factor now. I always kind of keep my body near it uh, just to make sure that there's no mishap. And you're going right over the, uh, on this particular machine, which is a 201-2 by Singer, we're going right over the top of the balance wheel and over the top of the uh, potted motor and then around. Real good anchor points. And you want to apply a, a fair amount of pressure with that strapping tape, or strapping uh, stretch wrap, excuse me. Or just plain old stretch wrap. <laughs> and now we're going to use the strapping tape to uh, anchor down that stretch wrap. Again, I would say about four to six times. I usually go a little bit heavier on this end just because uh, as the machine uh, is transported and it's fluxing back and forth and kind of rocking in that to some degree, uh, the extra weight on this end is going to put greater pressure against the strapping. Uh, protection that we put on there, the stretch wrap and then the uh, strapping tape. So I usually make this end just a little bit heavier than the front, which is a lot lighter. So hopefully that uh, that makes sense. It's kind of the weight, the weight factor. So you can kind of see from the front now what we've done. We first of all uh, protected the inside of the machine uh, with stretch wrap and stretching uh, strapping tape. Blah. We then anchored the machine on both ends uh, by the balance wheel, by the face plate uh, with stretch wrap and strapping tape. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the outside of the machine uh, with bubble wrap. We could have also applied the bubble wrap uh, before. I've done it both ways. Uh, but we're going to ultimately put that bubble wrap on and then apply stretch wrap again to press it in 
So this really will create a little bit more uh, stability because this strapping tape and stretch wrap on both ends is already creating a barrier against impact. It's strapped, it's tight, it's rigid, it's almost like a seat belt on both ends. So uh, you can do it either way. Um, I don't know if I prefer one over the other as long as that uh, those layers go on and that they're anchored uh, to what we've already put on. So. Alright, what do we have next? So that last one was called Sad Sunday. Obviously the one before, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Uh, before that, Corn Dogs in Santa Monica. And then we started with uh, Spirit of Fire. So this next one we're going to do is called Midnight Special. Midnight Special. And I always put the uh, the bubbles facing out, just because it creates a little bit more like a airbag protection with the bubbles out, uh, protecting against impact. go uh, right around six layers, six layers of bubble wrap. If the machine is going uh, a greater distance internationally, I might step it up even a little bit higher, but uh, typically between six to eight layers. around. Which ought to be about perfect as far as what I've left on this roll. So all I did uh, on the back of the machine is uh, 
that was kind of the ending point of the uh, bubble wrap so I just tagged it down and uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make this a single unit and press it into the machine to protect by using our stretch wrap again after we get a little bit more music on so that was midnight special and now we're going to do red eye like the sewing machine Model 66 Red Eye. That's not what this song is called. This song is called Red Eye, not Model 66 Red Eye. I don't want to confuse anybody. All right, so let's strap it down now with stretch wrap. now is we're going to anchor down the top point first, kind of pull these parts together and close off the top, and then we're going to uh, work our way all the way around the uh, stretch wrap to anchor that down as well. So I'm pulling with some pretty good force to really pull those halves together, kind of close them up. Come on, one more time. I'm ready this time. <laughs> Alright, so we're all set on top now. I'm just going to probably put one more strip of bubble wrap across there just to protect this uh, spool that's on top that's kind of sticking up. And now we're going to go around the entire machine with strapping tape. See, if we don't do this, that stretch wrap is basically just kind of floating there. It's not anchored down. solid up here we're, we're just going to add again another uh, small layer of bubble wrap across here across the uh, the crown of this to protect this kind of fill in that gap and the fill over the top of that spool pin 
Uh, spool pin is nice and solid. I mean, you can bump it like this, and it's got, you know, the the top of the uh, uh, the pillar area as a support. But still, right now we're we're just kind of hanging out there. So we're going to put a little layer over that, anchor that down, and also on the base of here. I don't know if you can see that. But right now we just kind of have this floating in the wind. So we're going to come all the way around there as well with uh, strapping tape, and then we'll anchor from top to here. Remember how we came around the top of the machine to anchor to this base? We'll extend that down to here because we have tape that we can attach it to. And then we're going to have a nice solid uh, single unit. now. Now the last one was Red Eye, right? So this next one is called Minor Blues for Booker. Minor Blues for Booker. So we have a choice. We can do the top or we can do the bottom first. Why don't we start on the top and work our way down? So we're going to take about two sections of this uh, bubble wrap. Again, my bubble is always face out. It's kind of my thing. We're going to roll, roll it like this, lengthwise. And then we're going to Fold it in half one more time so we got four layers of protection. Just make sure you get it nice and centered over that uh, spool. This excess off the ends, we can uh, we can either take it down, uh, but I'll probably just clip it off real quick. just to kind of finish it off and reinforce that top. I'm just going to throw a couple strips of tape, tape over the top of that too. turning so you can look around the entire machine. So we're looking really good on top right now. Um, I'm confident that this is affording the level of protection that we want, the sides as well. Now we need to anchor the base down, or we need to anchor the bottom of the machine, I should say, to this base that we created for it to ride on. So that's just a matter of going around the machine and anchoring that down. Oh, 
let's see. I don't know why in the search for gospel it comes up with happy birthday, but okay, the next one is happy birthday. So if it's your birthday in the month of August, happy birthday to you. For that matter, if it's your birthday in September, happy early birthday. Happy birthday, you know what your name is. Happy birthday to you. Come on, Hans and Bill, sing with me, buddies. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You know what your name is. I hope you do anyway. Happy birthday to you. So what I'm going to do now is we've went around here, we've reinforced that, now we need to anchor this to that. And I'm going to use my little magnetic tray to kind of pop us up just for a little bit so I can get underneath there. Happy birthday, you know what your name is. Happy in there. Yeah. Remember Bill shared that he's restored organs before. He could probably jam on this one. Yeah. Happy birthday. You know what your name is. Happy birthday. tight pants today so I could hit that high note. Okay, so again we're just uh, anchoring the uh, bottom of this machine to this strapping point here that we put on originally to go around the machine and anchor the machine to this base. So we're just making it a single unit. A single unit. You don't make it a single unit, you, uh, you've got a vulnerability to the machine, so you got it. You got to do that. You got to take that extra time and finish off those uh, edges and points, so that uh, no matter what that courier, whether it's uh, USPS or UPS or FedEx or MOUSC or who knows who might be transporting it, no matter what they do, the machine is going to be safe. kind of interesting to put like a GoPro inside of a case with a light system, maybe like an LED light system that would be able to light that area and just see what that machine goes through in its journey from the workshop to wherever it's heading, whether it's going to Ohio or Pennsylvania or California or Hawaii or uh, England or Australia. 
just to see what that poor machine has to go through the entire journey. Uh, I think that'd be fascinating. I, I'd sit down and watch it. Yes, I would. So at this point, we've got a real solid uh, protection plan for Tony's uh, 201-2. We've protected the top from impact down. We've protected the sides, the front and the back. We've got a solid base that's going to afford uh, protection to those uh, cast feet on this end of the machine so that one of those doesn't arrive broken, which I've had machines that I've ordered that have come to me that they didn't do any protection on the bottom and one of those cast legs is snapped right off. Uh, not a good day, not a good day. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the front of the machine, the back of the machine so that when Tony pulls it out he can right away see, okay, okay, I got it. Front of the machine, back of the machine. And uh, I just do that as a courtesy, it just makes it easier for the customer. Okay, what was that last one? Oh, happy birthday, we just sang it, duh. I hope you were singing with me and not just leaving me, leaving me hanging out there on my own. So down by the riverside is the next one, down by the riverside. I'm wondering, it's probably the traditional one that all of us pretty much know. It's labeled inspirational, so if you don't feel inspired, work on that, would you? That's uh, that's uh, Bill on the organ, by the way. Hans is on the drums, and I'm just messing around like I usually do. See that we can beat on Tony's machine now, because we can't hurt it. It's like invincible. It's like not even kryptonite would get through this. <laughs> one of these in for Tony. I mean, after all, the gentleman sent me three machines, right? Don't make me hold that low note too long. Oh, 
I like this one. This is one of my uh, this is one of my new ones. And I do this for a lot of my customers. Um, this one is called the ABCs of quilt making. And I don't know if Tony is into quilt making. If not, he could always re-gift it to someone else, although I'll be writing something inside of it, so that would kind of be tacking. But nonetheless, he'll have a book uh, that I've signed. And uh, if he decides to get into quilt making, this apparently will make it fairly easy to do. Fairly easy to do. So I will write something inside of there for Tony as well. This is a great one. It even has uh, patterns uh, in the back of it too that you can cut out. Along with all kinds of tips and tricks. So I will write something to Tony and then we will include that with uh, all of the sew-offs. And if you haven't seen that premiere yet, you'll want to check that premiere out because I go through all of these various sew-offs on Tony's 201-2. Again, his concern was to get power back to that machine. It didn't have a lot of power for a 201-2. So we did a combination of uh, leather suede. We did uh, U.S. Army grade canvas. And you can just see the stack, including the nylon webbing. And uh, if you watch that premiere, you'll just see what renewed power looks like on uh, Tony's uh, Rolls-Royce Singer sewing machines. So I always kind of put these on the front of the book and uh, pack it in there with the machine. Along with our Soulholic, of course. All right, let me throw a little bit more music on. Obviously, the last one was down by the riverside, so now we're going to do... Oh, okay, get ready to march. This next one is When Johnny Goes Marching... I thought it was When Johnny Goes Marching Home, or When Johnny Comes Marching Home but it just says when Johnny goes marching, so maybe it's a different song. That's the same one, they just made the title look a little bit different. All right, I'm gonna find a flat surface off camera. You just stare at our work over here so you can be reminded about how to wrap a vintage machine, all right? done. I'm a slow writer. So you can kind of see what I wrote here. This is what I do for a lot of folks inside of the uh, cover. And uh, you can read it as well as I can. I just wrote uh, to my friend Tony uh, Will Chart. All the best of sewing with your Rolls Royce of Singers. Renewed. Scott, August 2020. Yeah, kind of cool. on the bottom I toss a business card over there. There we go. 
All right. So you can see now we have it inside of the tote. We're a little bit higher profile, uh, so I'm going to have to uh, just see. Yeah, it's not bad. Just a slight higher profile than I anticipated. That that styrofoam base was a little bit thicker, so uh, I'll just have to kind of work the lid around that. Just make sure we're all the way down. And then what we'll do, obviously, is we'll fill in the cavities on either side of the machine with packing peanuts, Tony's book, and uh, you know any other goodies I decide to toss in. And then we just, uh, we just strap it up with the stretch wrap like you've seen in the other packing premieres, put all, all of our fragile labels on, and get it heading towards Ohio. So there you go. Kind of an impromptu uh, packing video just to show you the bon voyage of Tony's 201-2. Uh, off camera I'll be doing a similar one once I finish his 1591 and then all three of his machines will have gone through my very specialized process at the workshop. His Spartan was the first, the 192K, uh, then we have the 201-2 now ready to head home and last but certainly not least the little brother to the 201-2, Tony's Centennial 1591. I don't know if I'll shoot a, a premiere on that or not because I have a lot of videos on my channel for the 1591, uh, but I don't have a 1591 video on Tony's Centennial machine, so might end up, might end up doing that anyway. I, I'll wait and see how the tempo of the workshop is and if I am able to uh, uh, kind of chisel out the time to do that. Okay, so there you've seen it. This is how you pack a vintage machine properly. Um, and when you don't, when you when you've got those cast feet like a 201-2 has, you got to protect them. So you give it a good solid base, preferably not quite as thick as the one that I chose, <laughs> so that we don't have to manage that top clearance issue. But we've got enough padding on there that I'm not concerned about the machine being compromised. It's just a matter of getting the lid on. So <laughs> I'll work on that off camera so I don't embarrass myself. All right. Well, God bless and uh, pack well pack safe okay take care i've got to end in some music i've got to end in some music something other than johnny goes marching home how about jolly good fellow jolly good fellow <laughs> jolly good fellow but well, he's a jolly good fellow nobody can deny now we just go around the workshop a little bit while this cool music is jamming out oh boy there's a lot of dust wait let me try this Remember to flush, please, remember to flush. Hello, Your Majesty, and the King of Kings.
Hey, Dr. Singer. Hey, Rock. Yeah, there you are. We remember that. Uh-huh. Laugh. To express a special mirth by a series of inarticulate sounds with the mouth open in a wide smile to show amusement. Ha-ha. <laughs> yes. And remember, holy cow, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. You remember her. Bon voyage to Tony's machine. It's going to head out today. Yay! All right, let's jump over here real quick. He's a jolly good fellow. Boy, he's a jolly good fellow. It's nobody. Nobody can deny. All right. A little tour around the workshop there to kind of extend that while we're waiting for the music to come to an end. Very cool music, by the way. All right, Tony. Well, this is machine two that is soon to be heading your way. And then I'll be focusing on machine three, 1591 Centennial. And uh, I don't know if you're ultimately going to be sending more. I certainly welcome it. Uh, I really am uh, feel privileged and honored to have taken care of all three of these machines for you. Uh, two and a half. I haven't finished the 1591 yet. But... Uh, it says a lot. I appreciate the uh, faith and confidence. So, all right. Say goodbye to Tony's machine. Bye, bye, bye. All right. God bless everybody. And remember, you're never old until regrets take the place of your dreams. So hang on to your dreams and take action on them. Okay? Take care.